It concludes that Iraq has chemical and biological weapons, that Saddam has continued to produce them, that he has existing and active military plans for the use of chemical and biological weapons, which could be activated within 45 minutes, including against his own Shia population. The United States knows that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. Any country on the face of the earth with an active intelligence program knows that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. There is no doubt that Saddam Hussein now has weapons of mass destruction. There is no doubt that he is amassing them to use against our friends, against our allies, and against us. The choice is his. And if he does not disarm, the United States of America will lead a coalition and disarm him in the name of peace. Saddam Hussein aids and protects terrorists, including members of Al-Qaeda. Secretly and without fingerprints, he could provide one of his hidden weapons to terrorists or help them develop their own. Before September the 11th, many in the world believed that Saddam Hussein could be contained. The war on terror, is, you can't distinguish between Al-Qaeda and Saddam when you talk about the war on terror. We've learned that Iraq has trained Al-Qaeda members in bomb making and poisons and deadly gases. He's a threat because he is dealing with Al-Qaeda. We know that Iraq and Al-Qaeda have had high-level contacts. He has not developed any significant capability with respect to weapons of mass destruction. He is unable to project conventional power against his neighbors. Uh, we are able to keep arms from him. His military forces have not been rebuilt. It appears that there were not weapons of mass destruction there. You said you knew where they were. I did not. We know where they are. They're in the area around uh, Tikrit and Baghdad and, and uh, east, west, south, and north somewhat. You said you knew where they were near Tikrit, near Baghdad, and north, east, south, and west of there. Those are your words. And my words. My words were. We know where they are. They're in the area around uh, Tikrit and Baghdad and, and uh, east, west, south, and north somewhat. The senator's got his facts wrong. I have not suggested there's a connection between Iraq and the 9 11. With respect to 9-11, of course, you've had the um, uh, story that's been public out there, the checks uh, alleged that uh, Mohammed Atta, the lead attacker, met uh, in Prague with a senior Iraqi intelligence official five months before the attack. He said there were three main reasons for going to war in Iraq. Weapons of mass destruction, the claim that Iraq was sponsoring terrorists who had attacked us on 9-11, and that Iraq had purchased nuclear materials from Niger. Uh, all three of those turned out, turned out to be false. Uh, first, uh, just if I might correct a misperception, I, I don't think we ever said, at least I know I didn't say, that there was a direct connection between September the 11th and, 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 and Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein aids and protects terrorists, including members of al-Qaeda. You have said in the past that it was, quote, pretty well confirmed. No, I never said that. Okay. I, I never think said that, that is... No, it's absolutely not. What I said was... Uh, it's been pretty well confirmed that he did go to Prague and he did meet with uh, a senior official of the Iraqi intelligence service. Well, let me and, just ask and, uh, you this. If they did not have these weapons of mass destruction, though, granted all of that is true, mm -hmm. why then did they pose an immediate threat to us, to well, this country? The, you and a few other critics are the only people I've heard use the phrase immediate threat. Mm -hmm.
that he has existing and active military plans for the use of chemical and biological weapons, which could be activated within 45 minutes. Active chemical munitions bunkers, mobile production facilities. The United States knows that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. The reason I keep insisting that uh, there was a relationship between Iraq and Saddam and Al-Qaeda because there was a relationship between Iraq and Al-Qaeda. What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing. You know, what has been happening as we debate the number of troops, as we debate whether to withdraw, is also this continual debate over the intelligence. Uh, leading up to the war. And I know you've said you believe that it's wrong to question the motives or the honesty of administration officials, but I have a different question for you. If you had known that no weapons of mass destruction would be found, would you have advocated invasion? I didn't advocate invasion. You didn't? No, I wasn't asked. If you read all the books and the things... You weren't, but why weren't you asked? That's very puzzling. Well, I'm sure the president understood what my views were, but, but as a technical matter, did he ever look and say... What should we do? Should we go do this or not do that? This is something that the president thought through very carefully. Are you trying to distance yourself from the war with that? Of course not. I agreed completely with the decision to go to war. And I've said that a hundred times. And don't, don't even suggest that. I'm just asking. Yeah, well, you know better. Uh, look, the interesting thing to me about the pre-war intelligence is clearly it was wrong. Every statement I make today is backed up by sources, solid sources. These are not assertions. But uh, would you have been for an invasion if we had known that? If I, the answer is, uh, if I, the answer is, uh, if I, the answer is, uh, probably yes. When it comes to who else knew the American public was being lied to about Iraq, one Democratic senator now says you can add the entire Intelligence Committee to the list. Dick Durbin of Illinois making the amazing claim on the floor of the Senate that while he and perhaps the 16 other members of that Intelligence Committee knew the administration was misleading the American public, he, perhaps they, kept quiet about it because due to his position on the committee, he had been sworn to secrecy. A few hundred feet away from here, in a closed room, carefully guarded, the Intelligence Committee was meeting on a daily basis for top secret briefings about the information we were receiving, and the information we had in the Intelligence Committee was not the same information being given to the American people. I couldn't believe it. Members of this administration were in active, heated debate over whether aluminum tubes really meant that the Iraqis were developing nuclear weapons, some within the administration saying, of course not. It's not the same kind of aluminum tube. At the same time that members of the administration were telling the American people to be fearful of mushroom-shaped clouds. I was angry about it. Frankly, I couldn't do much about it. Because you see, in the Intelligence Committee, we're sworn to secrecy. We can't walk outside the door and say, the statement made yesterday by the White House is in direct contradiction to classified information that's being given to this Congress. We can't do that. We couldn't make those statements. And so in my frustration, I sat here on the floor of the Senate and listened to this heated debate about invading Iraq thinking the American people are being misled. They are not being told the truth. The information in there drawn from fact. You could find bits and pieces of fact throughout, but framed, articulated, crafted to convince someone of what? Well, of things that weren't true. Things that weren't true. 911, Al-Qaeda related to Saddam Hussein, possibly some involvement there. The very things that a year later, President Bush himself denies and, and feigns his surprise. I don't know why everybody thinks that. Well, I worked in a place where they concentrated on, on preparing this storyline. In this book of mine here, The Prosecution of George W. Bush,